Hi, everyone. Welcome to Heron Project Live. I am your host, Kevin Michaelazik. Thank you all for tuning in tonight. We have an amazing show lined up for you tonight with our founder, Chris Heron, also founder of Heron Wellness, um, which we'll spend a good deal of time talking about tonight, and also Heron Talks. And he is coming to you live from Warrington, Virginia, the newest location for Heron Wellness, which begins to open next week. So we are excited for that. A couple of Heron Project related announcements. Um, we are trying to build our YouTube channel. If you could go to our YouTube channel, um, which if you go to YouTube and put in Heron Project and subscribe to our channel, we are putting new content up daily and that would help us out a lot. So go to YouTube, put in Heron Project and subscribe to our channel. Also, I wanna talk about one of the services we offer. We've been extremely busy in this area lately. You know, People are struggling and people are reaching out for help and oftentimes they don't know where to go, how to navigate the system or what to do. And we have a team dedicated to serve those individuals and families who don't know what to do. We call it treatment navigation. And we will work with you regardless of your resources to find help. And oftentimes we are able to provide opportunities that wouldn't be available elsewhere. And I'm extremely proud of that. We help hundreds of people every year, but the need right now, especially with all going on in the world, people are struggling, but we are here stronger and better than ever. So if you are struggling, I'll put the number up in a little bit. Please do reach out to us. We can help you no matter where you are in the country. But we have an amazing team of dedicated professionals who are ready to walk with you on your journey to recovery. So let's get right into it. I'm going to bring in our founder, Chris Heron. How are you? I'm good, buddy. How are you? I am good. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. How are things down in Virginia? Things are good. Things are great. Um, you know, we're close, uh, you know, opening right around the corner. Um, so we're in the final push, the final stages of, of creating this amazing environment for, for the guests that will be coming down here. Um, you know, a year ago, I walked onto this property and I felt that it was special. Um, I felt that this was a, a, a property that people were going to connect with and, and uh, be highly motivated to, to heal and to come down here today, um, come down here yesterday and to see this place ready to operate and run um, is a dream come true for all of us. And it ha it's been, <clears throat> I know you guys have been talking about this for well over a year and, you know, with COVID and everything going on, it got, you know, put on the back burner a little bit, but it's, you know, I know the service and the level of compassion and care that you guys provide in Seekonk, and it's going to be a blessing to that community in the state of Virginia and the surrounding states to have access to that type of compassionate care and, uh, can you tell us a little more about, you know, what will be offered in Warrington? You know, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be the very same model as um, as Jacob Hill uh, in Seacomp. You know, this this property is a little different. It's set on sixty acres. Um, you know, we have walking trails and and wildlife all around. Um, it's very serene and very peaceful. Um, you know, so it's it's it, it kind of offers a different feel than um, than Seacomp does. It's a model that we believe in. Uh, the services we provide, uh, we believe, are, are truly instrumental um, in early recovery. You know, from all the holistic practices such as you know acupuncture and massage therapy and hyperbaric chamber and you know, the nutritionist and the massage therapist and the personal trainer, you know, all this stuff that we that we provide, uh, we truly believe in and we believe that it gives people a head start that's necessary um, in recovery for long term. So the model is 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 set and, and it's worked um, 
phenomenally well for us uh, in Seekonk, and we're looking forward for it to come down to Virginia. And you guys hired a, a rock star to run at Alex Rosenberg, who I had the opportunity to spend some time with. She stayed at my house and with uh, Katie Dodotolo, and she ran the town with road race with us. And she is just salt of the earth, good, dedicated, unbelievably smart individual. So you couldn't have picked a better person to run it. You know, it's it's for me, it's it's about people who, who truly care, right? It's about people who want to be part of someone else's process, someone else's journey. Um, you know, that's what recovery gives us. You know, it gives us the opportunity to witness miracles. And, and you know, there's no greater responsibility um, or no greater feeling than, you know, on a daily, uh, you know, showing up to work every day and witnessing miracles happen right before your eyes. I, I have a, a 28-year-old uh, at Jacob Hill right now who is who has been detoxing um, off the boxing. And, you know, for the last three weeks, I watched this young man uh, suffer. Um, and I came into work on Monday and I saw him sitting at the dining room and, you know, he had a big smile on his face. And, and it, wasn't even his, it wasn't even the smile on his face. You know, I told him that his, eye, his eyes were smiling. Um, you know, and that's that's something you don't see every day. And uh, Alex Rosenberg is is special. She is so committed to this. Um, you know, she left Nantucket, and you know her two beautiful daughters and her husband have moved down to Warrington. We also have um, our staff that's currently here right now are all people from um, from Jacob Hill from from that. The, the model that we've created. So, uh, you know, we're gonna get a head start here. That model is gonna be put into play uh, on day one because the people who are here are, are well aware of it and familiar with it. Now that's critical to be able to hit the ground running with individuals who care deeply, but also know the program and, you know, what's expected. And so that's huge. So last time, one of the favorite parts of this show was kind of when I told some stories from my childhood. So I figured, I figured I'd bring one back up. Sure. And it, if you flash back to Disney World, probably circa 1991, when we were down there and you, we were on those little individual motorboats and yours stalled out mm -hmm. in the water. And I saw it and it was almost like I was a shark and I saw blood in the water and I immediately punched it into high gear, started barreling towards you. And I believe you were giving me the no and I smacked right into you. Mm -hmm. You almost killed me. <laughs> I mean, let's get to the point. You let's, let's get to the, the, the engine motor was, was humming probably six inches from my feet as I'm sitting in the middle of this gigantic pond at Disney World. Um, yeah, I mean, it was, you were a kamikaze coming in and there was no stopping it. And I'm just blessed that, you know, my face wasn't um, taken off by the engine that was, was still revving six inches from me. So, uh, you know, that is one of many stories that, I was nearly hospitalized because of some of your some of your reckless behavior. <laughs> I think you may I may have caused more hospitalizations than you probably had overdoses. <laughs> this possible? Yeah, you're right. It's it's definitely possible. And then the best part about it was we both had to get towed in, and then six yeah. months later, my parents got a bill in the mail for five thousand dollars for damages sustained to the the motorcraft. Yeah, it's not that, that that wasn't the last bill they received either. <laughs> no, definitely not. Uh, so I want to shift to a little bit about family support. I know a lot of the services we offer at Heron Project are about the family, but you guys also really have a strong family component 
Can you talk about that component and kind of how that goes hand in hand with the person recovering and the family recovering on parallel tracks? You know, I, I personally believe that there's a lot of treatment centers out there that want to kind of just do as little as possible. Um, kind of protect themselves by, by um, creating these programs where families are only involved, you know, for an hour um, once a month. And, you know, what we've tried to do here is kind of mirror life. Um, and I, and I, believe, I believe in that. I believe that, you know, people need to be in this setting, but yet still feel like they're living. Um, and family is a big part of that. And, and you know, as, as you've embraced at the Heron Project and we've, we've learned along the way that um, families deserve, deserve to heal as well. And, and they, 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 they deserve to be on this journey with you. Um, so, you know, family is a big part. Um, family is, is something that uh, we, we focus on heavily at Heron Wellness. And to be quite honest with you, it's probably one of the greatest things that I see when I watch, um, you know, when you look out the window and you see a bunch of young kids, you know, running around the property or playing tennis or jumping in the pool. Um, because the stigma around, around substance use, you know, is that, you know, where's mommy, where's daddy? And they're probably in this really bad hospital, um, you know. And then they show up, and they're like, "This is this is really nice, and this is I'm 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 happy Daddy's here, or I'm happy my mom's here." Um, and and that takes away a lot of the the anxiety and fear um, that's presented to them at a young age. So this 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 environment is definitely family friendly. Friendly. It's definitely family centric. Um, and I think that that goes along with, you know, our guests sustaining sobriety long term. And I know the I mean, it feels like every day that I see another person celebrating a year, celebrating two years um, on the Heron Wellness page. And that is a testament to the program that you've put together and the staff. And well, I believe a good part of that, too, is also because of that specialization on the families and giving them the support and the tools and the resources that they need to be able to support their loved one in recovery, but also heal themselves. Yeah. I mean, that's, the, you know, that's, a, that's always a special day, um, you know, to watch people come in and, you know, and, and families given us the responsibility to take care of their loved ones. Um, you know, and then to pick your head up 365 days later and see the whole family sitting in the room together, you know, celebrating recovery, celebrating that milestone. Um, it's special, you know, and we've been open now two and a half years. So to see the people now celebrating two years, um, you know, it's just, uh, it's an honor to be part of, part of their journey and, and to, to be a small part of, of the beginning of their story. Uh, you know, we're fortunate at Heron Wellness. Um, you know, most guests stay uh, long term. Um, you know, I was always told by the old timers to pray for a slow recovery. Uh, you know, I would walk into this men's meeting in Portsmouth and, and the old timers would say, pray for a slow recovery. And um, I was fortunate, you know, my story, uh, I had a slow recovery. I was, I was in a setting of, of a therapeutic setting of some sort for almost 11 months um, and, and my recovery was slow and, and I believe, you know, I'm celebrating, you know, 12 plus years because of the pace that I went and, and you know, at Heron Wellness, we have that, you know, we have a lot of guests that, that want to stay, that want to stay connected, that want to remain part of it. Our alumni network is unbelievably strong. Um, you know, our former guests, they feel like, you know, that they want to be part of it even when they leave. Um, so that lends to a, a, a community that's extremely supportive and, and, and looking out for one another. I want to give a shout out to Danny with 63 days and Brian with 10 days. Mm. Oh, no doubt. That's where it's at. So... 
We're getting a lot of comments here, but um, those two jumped right out at me. I remember those early days, the uh, the struggle and the uncertainty and kind of having to humble yourself and, you know, kind of jumping in someone's back pocket and learning how they did it and, you know, being teachable, being coachable. And, you know, that's one aspect, you know, you really talk about a lot too, is being coachable. You, you know, you were coached that, you know, a very high level, but, you know, when it came to recovery, that coachable piece has to, is a critical aspect of that. Can you talk about being coachable? Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, just with my athletic background, I, I think, um, I think culture matters. I think, I think, uh, having the right coaches in your life matter. Um, you know, the humility that, that one feels or goes through in early recovery, um, that gives you the ability to kind of just sit back and let somebody else take the reins for you. Um, you know, I, I, I think it's a huge part of that process. We call, um, we, you know, the, 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 the employees here are called life coaches, um, because it's, it's not, it's not just all about recovery, right? I mean, there's so many areas of their life, um, that need focus and attention. Um, and, and our life coaches kind of hit on all of that. So, you know, I was fortunate. I was very, very fortunate. I, you know, I had you in my life. Um, you know, I had you in my life that, that, you know, you, you opened up your back pocket and I jumped in, um, you know, your wife, Bobby Egan, um, yourself. I had, I had some influences in my life very early on who kind of showed me the ropes and told me how to do this. You know, when we talk about, you know, the two, that have 60 and 10 days sober. You know, I remember sitting at primary, primary purpose, um, the Cape, and, you know, I, I think it was like my seventh month chip. And, you know, I, I'm starting to feel a little better. I'm starting to kind of look in the mirror again. And, you know, I'm sitting there too cool and I don't want to get up to get my chip. And, you know, that day you taught me a lesson. That day you, you looked me in the eye and you, you said, this is not about you, you getting the chip. It's about someone seeing you get it. And, um, you know, it's that simple wisdom that, you know, this program gives you that, you know, the, the act of being selfless and, and coachable and taking direction, you know, it's all critical components in this. And, and again, I learned a lot of that from you. <laughs> I think you give me too too much credit. It was something that was passed down to me. And I think that's the beauty of this whole thing. It started 70 something yeah. years ago. It's uh we all regurgitate it to a certain extent, you know, and it's you know, it's a formula that has worked for me, it's worked for you, it's worked for millions, and you know, there's yeah. plenty of other ways to get sober. There's a lot of people, there's a lot of people that don't regurgitate it. You know, there's a lot of people that, you know, they get this gift and they and they just never look back. And and you know, everybody has their own recovery process, but um, you know, for me it's all about, you know, giving back and 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 you know, remaining teachable, remaining coachable and, and also um, coaching others. And, and, and doing it and because I, I think that's that's kind of the foundation of our program helping others um, you know that's something that I learned very early on and, and you were a great example of that um, and, and and still to this day an amazing example at how selfless you are and how motivated you are to help others and wanting to be part you know of, of this process and and you know, Again, and, and I've said it a million times, you know, not many people get to see what we see. Um, you know, not many people get to look into a child's eyes and see, you know, panic and fear and, and six months later see a smile um, and comfort and at ease. Um, you know, recovery not only impacts, impacts the, the individual, it, it, 
it has an effect on everybody that loves that person. So, Absolutely. you know, we don't take that responsibility lightly and knowing that it's part of, uh, of our traditions and our, our, our steps, it's, um, it's something that's an integral part of my, my recovery program because of you. I want to talk about, and you've hit on it in a kind of a couple different areas, but you know, when we were going through the rebranding and kind of figuring out, you know, core identity of all three of your organizations and this kind of idea of, you know, walking with you. And um, I believe that kind of our philosophy is to walk with people, you know, mm -hmm walk side by side with them and we end up creating a community kind of a family because we are so hands-on and we really take those extra steps to really make people feel comfortable and supported can you talk kind of about that philosophy of walking with people you know we i i think really what it all stems and goes back to is is the, the foundation of of recovery and, and the core principles you know, it's it's helping others, and you know, not it's it's a very self selfless thing to do, but it's also, you know, a selfish thing to do for one's recovery. Um, you know, I I think that's giving me probably my greatest strength and and motivation is is to be part of someone else's journey, and, and to be uh, given the opportunity to witness it. Um, you know, this you can have the greatest doctors and the most beautiful serene property but if you don't have people inside that building who truly truly care and 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 love and love what they're doing um you know you're not you, you shouldn't be involved in it and because it's a uh, it's it's an amazing responsibility and and to walk with someone is is a uh, it's a gift and I think we embody that. I think that's what, you know, we've done at the Heron Project. I think we've done that at Heron Wellness. I think Heron Talks. Um, you know, we really want to be part of the process. And, and, you know, we've taken that on. And I think that's the mission that we, we truly believe in. It's at our core. I was... I forget where I was. I was in a meeting or something, but we were talking about something similar to this. And, you know, when someone reaches out to you and asks you to be part of their journey and to help them and to guide them and to support them, you know, it's a responsibility, but, you know, it's also a privilege, you know, and it's, um, that's what I love about everything that you do, that we do, that all the organizations do, that, it, the employees do everyone that works there it's it's a privilege and you know when someone puts their faith in you and their trust in you to, to guide them along this process it's you know we are privileged as people to be able to be part of that process and uh it's it really really is a beautiful thing absolutely and, and you know there's oftentimes i have to remind you know, some of that, yeah. um, I think that was good. I know. <laughs> You're playing with the buttons. <laughs> hey, how many times have you that in front of a police officer? I got nothing. Um, you know, I uh, it is a privilege, it, it 100%. And oftentimes, I have to I have to remind some of our guests, you know, what like what that first phone call felt like. Um. You know what that initial phone call from a mom or a dad or a husband or a wife or a son or a daughter, um, you know, asking for us to help their loved one, and you know the pain in their voice and the pain. Um, you know, I you, sometimes you you know you have to you have to be reminded, and you know that's why the family thing is such a big thing here. You know, because they want to be part of it. You know, nobody, nobody, he, I say it all the time. That's the scariest thing about addiction that nobody knows who's going to suffer from it. Um, 
but it's really hard to, to, to heal a broken heart and, and recovery can do that. And, you know, here at Heron Wellness, we want, you know, family and guests to kind of be parallel on the same path. Um, you know, so when they leave, they kind of meet at a very healthy point. Um, so, you know, not only walking with the guests, but walking that journey with the family uh, is, is, a, is an integral part of this. We're getting requests for more stories. So I might give one more if you. Mm. Which one? <laughs> one of your favorites. The Hornet's Nest? <laughs> nope. That was uh, that was from the last time. But So Chris, one night in our wild teens, ended up, I'm going to call it falling asleep early. Um, and a group of us took a bunch of magic markers and drew a bunch of inappropriate stuff all over him. Um, next morning, he had a physical for basketball, and he woke up late, which was not an uncommon occurrence, and ran out the door and ran to the physical. So when he stripped down for the physical right in front of the doctor, he had all sorts of inappropriate marker ta tattoos all over him. And I... I think you tell it best the reaction that the doctor had. You, you know, well, first of all, I was 14 years old and it was it was a physical that was very important to me because I was asked to take part on the varsity basketball team at Drury High School, which has always been a dream, a dream of mine. And, um, you know, and, and unfortunately, the night before we we, um, you know, like many nights, we drank too much and, and I, I passed out and my friends decided to uh, use my body as a canvas. And uh, I just remember walking into Dr. Coleman's office, who is this older gentleman, very stoic, um, and his nursing staff. And I had symbols on my face, up my neck, down, I had them everywhere. And, and I just remember them looking at me like, you know, this is this is a really, really bad, bad beginning for you. And uh, but, you know, hey, listen, we we that's the games had already begun. And, you know, revenge was um, very carefully executed down the road. And you've been on the other side of that. Oh, I have <laughs> many a time. The last kind of thing I want to touch on is kind of, and it's super relevant right now, is community and connection. You know, with COVID going on, you know, meetings have been, you know, discontinued, the in-person meetings. Um, can you talk about what you're doing to stay connected and stay part of community? Yeah. I'm, I'm one of the lucky ones, right? I'm, I'm, I'm blessed because... You know, this is my life. Um, you know, right now at Jacob Hill, we have, you know, 22 people living there. Um, you know, at Lincoln, we have 10 people living in that on that property and now opening opening in Warrington, Virginia. Uh, you know, my daily routine is around recovery. It's around people like me, um, people who are. Who are brave, right, who unafraid to disclose and talk and, and, and want um, a very motivated um, to connect with others, uh, to find that right support in their life, um, you know, to get past this, um, this point in their life. So, you know, I'm, I'm very fortunate, you know, I work with, you know, one of the, the greatest women, you know, with Laurie McCarthy, who she has 30 plus years sober, um, you know, to have her around on a daily basis to, to kind of walk in her shadow and, and know that, you know, he is a mom of four uh, beautiful boys who have lived most of her adult life in recovery um, is an amazing ex example for me to follow. And, um, you know, I never lost the concept that, you know, the newcomer is the most important person in the room. And, you know, I'm around a lot of newcomers, um, but I'm also around a lot of mentors that I look up to um, in my recovery. And, you know, the phone, you know, thank God for the phone. You know, thank God for FaceTime. Thank God for Zoom. Thank God 
you know, for text messaging um, because, you know, I'm only a phone call away or, 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 or a FaceTime away from, you know, connecting with you and talking with you or talking with others in recovery who, who I look up to and, and help support me in it. Awesome. Well, that brings us to the end. I want to thank you for coming on. I know you get a lot going on down there and you guys are going to crush it and you're going to serve so many people and change so many lives and be a blessing to that community. So thank you. I love you. And I love any you. Last words? Yeah, no, I love you too. I, you know, this is a big step for us. It's, uh, you know, if you asked me 12 years ago where I would be, it wouldn't be here. And, you know, um, you know, to be sitting here 12 years sober, opening up the second wellness center is, uh, is a dream come true. And it's something that, um, you know, we're really looking forward to. And, you know, with, with the help of so many, I've been able to get to this point. And, uh, but I would be nowhere near this point if, if recovery was not uh, in my life. And uh, it's given me everything I've ever wanted and needed. And, you know, it's a blessing that I, I look forward to carrying the message and being part of people's journey down in this part of the country. And I love you and, and what we've done together is, is amazing. And I wouldn't be here without you. So um, no, I wouldn't be here without you. Thanks for everybody listening. And, uh, and I'll, I'll connect with you tomorrow. All right. Have a good night. All right. Love you. Love you. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. That was a inspiring night of hope. So we thank you. Don't forget to check out our website, heronproject.org. If you want to learn more about everything going on at Heron Wellness, go to heronwellness.com. Thank you. Be well, stay safe, and God bless.